Welcome to Fable on Your Table Let's Play. We're going to be playing through the first level of, or the first room of a first level game to show you how all the mechanics work. Before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about the core mechanic of the game, though. Uh, <clears throat> in this game, characters are defined by a bunch of dice. So a 10 sided die, d10, an 8 sided die, d8 for their different skills, their different equipment. Your level is represented by a die. You start out at D4. And whenever you have something you need to do to test whether you're winning or losing or succeeding or failing, you do a two versus two die roll. That's the main mechanic of the game. For instance, let's do an example. Suppose my archer here is fighting this skeleton warrior. My archer has an archery of D10 and a bow of D10. You just pick the, anything that's relevant to the current situation and shooting an arrow at a skeleton warrior, these two things are always relevant, archery and my bow. Your level is also always relevant, but it's only a D4 and I wanna use the highest dice. But as I level up, like when I get to level 12, D12, I'm going to want to use that instead of my archery, perhaps. The skeleton warrior is going to choose his ignores pain and undead traits. Those are his defensive traits. So he will be rolling a d6 and a d8. So let's pull out those dice. So I'm going to have a d10 for archery. I've got a d10 for my bow. He's got ignores pain for d6 and undead as a d8. And then what you do is you just roll them. Archery, one. Bow, three. Not so good. Ignores pain, two. Undead, one. Wow, we all rolled very low. What you do is you then see which die was highest. In this case, it was the three, my bow. My bow is the deciding factor in this contest, and it won. And then what I would do is I would take the highest die and subtract the other side's highest die to get a success level. So I have a 3. His highest is a 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. So I would do 1 point of damage to him. Now, there are ways to muck with this system a little bit. For instance, as you can see on my Archer character sheet here, my bow has a boon of plus one damage. What a boon means is that when it's the highest die roll, then it's a special effect that takes place when that die is the highest. So my bow die is highest right now, so it gets the boon of plus one. So with this roll, three minus two is one, but I get to activate the boon, so I would do an extra point of damage. Now what happens if you roll doubles. Suppose he had rolled a 3 and a 1 instead of a 2 and a 1. Well now the highest die is a tie. How do we determine what the outcome is? Well what we do is we remove the dice that didn't roll that high value and re-roll. So my bow versus his ignore pain. 5 and 4. Now, I, now it's clear who won and it's a difference of one, and I would do one plus one for the boon point of damage. Now, when you roll doubles and they're both on your side, like say I rolled a five and a five, and he did not roll a five, he rolled a three and a one. Now, you take all the dice that, match the, that did not match the highest double, or triple and remove them. That means both of his dice have been removed. So I get to do the full five points of damage. It's a critical hit. So he doesn't get to subtract his highest roll anymore. In addition, if both of my dice had boons, I'd get to apply them both. There's a concept of attacking with advantage in this game. Certain situations will give you advantage when you do something. 
All that means is that you get to re-roll your lowest die. So if I was attacking with advantage and I had a five and a one here, I could re-roll my one. It didn't help me. I still have a three, but it might help me. I might get a seven. So when you have advantage, you get to re-roll the lowest die. If you have disadvantage, that just means the other side gets to have advantage. And you can only ever have one advantage. If you have two effects that are giving you advantage, you still only get to re-roll one. The other thing that you get to do is on your character sheet, you will have abilities. Abilities are special rules that you can put into play for the cost of one stamina. For instance, the archer has a dodge ability. When you take physical damage, you can use this ability to reduce damage you are taking by one. So if the skeleton warrior attacks me with his pitted sword and, my, and his relentless, and I don't block it with my leather armor and heavy cloak, and he does like three points of damage to me, I can spend a point of stamina and reduce that down to two. You can only use an abil a given ability once per turn. So I couldn't spend three stamina to ignore a three damage hit. But I could reduce a three to two this turn and a three to two next turn. On your turn, you have three actions. So what's an action? Well, moving is an action. Attacking is an action. You can also do a move and an attack, like say I was here and he was here, I could do a move and an attack in one, when, in one action called a charge, and that gives me advantage on my attack. When you're moving, you move Manhattan style, but once per turn, you can move diagonally. There's also you can break a charge, like if I'm here and I know he's going to charge at me, I can set myself against charge, and if he charges at me, I break that charge and he doesn't get to roll with advantage. Those are basically the, the moves that you have. There's some other moves that involve things like opening chests, searching corpses, and stuff like that, but those are the main um, actions in the game. You can take three actions, then the enemy takes three actions, and you just alternate until the game is over. Uh, there are some optional rules for initiative. So when you come into a room for the first time, it's just assumed that you get to go first. But if you want to use the optional rules for um, initiative, that would give the monsters an opportunity to move first sometimes. And that's about it. So let's set up a game and see how it goes. So the game is run, adjudicated, by a um, companion web app. Let me let's see, reload this. Okay, so here's the web app. I'm going to clear my adventure and start a new, app, a new quest. So when you're starting a new quest, you choose which realms you have. Realms are just basically um, uh, groups, <laughs> groups of different minis that are related. Like, for instance, the realm of the wraith is a bunch of undead things. And hopefully I'll be able to get more um, realms later for us to play with. But right now, realm of the wraith is the only one we have. And then you choose the difficulty. I'm a D4 level hero because I'm just starting out, so I just choose D4. And it sets the quest. I have to slay the white. There's a white that's attacking the town, and they've sent me out there to go kill the white. The objective is to slay the white and escape. If I can do that, if I can go in, kill the white, escape the dungeon, then I level up. If I level up five times, I win the game. So... Let's go ahead and go in. I'm gonna journey onward. Here's the companion web app. It shows you a map of the first room. It's got a list of all the features in the room like exits and enemies and chests and stuff. And it shows you where all these things go on the map with these little numbered circles. So let's set up this map 
and play through this first room. So let's see, I need this room, this tile, and this tile. So it looks kind of like this. And the stairs, I come into the stairs down here and there's a doorway over here. And I come in right here. So let's, because that's facing the other direction, let's use this one without any archway on it. Use my mini here. Okay, and then what's in this room? Well, there's the dungeon exit. There's a cobwebbed passage. A dark passage choked with cobwebs leads away. Uh, there's a rat swarm. Yikes. In the room, and that is at here. There is a corpse on the ground right here. I guess the rats are feasting on it. And then there's another rat swarm eee. right here. Yeah, the rats are feasting on a corpse that's lying there. So I'll play through this level. And when I defeat the different enemies, I'll just tap defeat. And when I go to search the corpse, I'll tap search. When I go to leave the room, I'll tap exit west. And it will tell me what happens. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay. I'm going to replace this with this and a door. Normally, you're looking at it from the same direction, but since you're looking at it from this way and I'm looking at it this way, it's, I'm like, I'm gonna put that there so I can see better. So I'm here and I start. So I have three actions that I can take. So I'm gonna come into the room so I can see them and I'm gonna shoot an arrow at this closest rat. Okay, so let's see, I need to get, there's the archer, that's me, there's the rat swarm. So, I have my archery of 10, my bow of 10, and what's his defense? He's got legion, there's just a lot of them. So that's a d4, and they're scurrying. So that's another d4, so these are kind of wimpy guys, but they have a nasty bite, and they're, they, there's a lot of them. And they have advantage when attacked with piercing weapons. So I'm attacking them with a piercing weapon, so one arrow killing one rat just doesn't do a lot of damage. So they have advantage on their attacks. So archery, six, bow, three, legion, one, scurrying, one, and then they get to reroll one. I'll choose scurrying because I don't want that legion to happen. Okay, three. So the highest value was a six. Their highest value was a three. So I do three damage to them. They have a total of five health. So I'll just put this next to them to remember that I've done three damage. And then, let's see, that was my second action. So my third action will be to shoot at it again. And maybe I can kill it. Archery, four. Bow, five, legion, three, scurrying, two. So the highest is five, minus three is two. That's enough to kill it. Oh, and I have a boon too, so it would be three damage, but I don't, they only have five health. So that thing has been killed. So I've killed the giant rats that are attacking over there, but that's the end of my turn. So now they come and get me. One, two, three. They can't quite make reach me yet, but they will next turn. So I'm gonna shoot at them again. Oh wait, they had an advantage, I forgot. It's okay, gotta remember that. Archery, seven, bow, two, legion, one, scurrying, one, but they have advantage, four, ooh. So I do seven minus four is three damage. 
I'll shoot at him again. Bow, seven, knife, or archery seven, bow five, legion three, scurrying two, two will reroll because they have advantage, one. So seven minus three is four. That's enough to kill. All right. So we've successfully killed the rats without taking any damage. That's a good start for this dungeon. Now, when there's no enemies, I don't have to go turn by turn. One, two, three, one, two, three. I can just move where I want and then take a long action to do things like searching. So I'm going to move here and search this corpse. So what I do is I just come over here to this and I tap... Oh, and I defeated the rats. Nothing happens. But I'm going to search. Oh, I forgot there's a chest there, too. I didn't add the chest. Okay. So I'm going to search the corpse first. You kneel down and examine the small body. Make a search check versus 2d6. Okay. So I need to make a search check, but... I don't have the search skill, so that's a d4, and my level is always relevant, so that's a d4. So I have 2d4 versus 2d6, so let's see how I do. 4 and 4, yeah, that is, that's good news. Maybe as long as I don't roll a 5 or 6 over here, oh, there's a 6, so I still fail. So I failed the check. You find nothing of interest, but the news of this young girl will surely bring heartbreak to their parents, but hopefully you will at least bring them closure. Okay. Now, so I didn't find anything there. I can still search that chest, but because I took a long action, I have to roll for wandering monsters. And to do that, I just click the roll for wandering monsters button. No new danger arises. That's good. The chances of getting a wandering monster goes up the higher level you are, so it's pretty safe when you're first at the first starting out, but as you get higher up, it gets more and more dangerous. So now I'm going to take a long action to search that chest. It does not appear to be trapped. If you carefully open the chest, you find a D6 rank stamina potion in a little iron flask. Great. Okay, so I can take that with me and drink it to regain some stamina later. And then I could just go over here to this door, open it, cobweb passage, and then it shows me a new room to lay out. There's crypt bats in there, a rat, and another chest, and two new passages leading, and another passage leading out. And that's basically the game. I would play through more rooms seeing if I can find the white. If I find the white, kill it, get back out, I go up a level and I can go to town and spend any treasure that I've used to uh, buy training to raise my skills or add new abilities. I can buy other equipment. I can get blessings from the, the, the church in there. We, I can do all kinds of cool stuff to improve my chances the next time I go into the dungeon. And that's Fable on your table. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks for watching, and uh, let me know what you think.